Before we develop our first RESTful web service, we need to understand few basic concepts. In this video, we will see what is an API and why do we need it. Then we will see what is REST API and what are the operations we can perform using REST APIs. So without any further delay, let us begin. Let us start with what is API. API stands for Application Programming Interface. It allows different software applications to communicate with each other. It acts as an interface between different applications. Let us understand this with a very basic example. Imagine you are at a restaurant. The menu represents the services available or the food items which you can order. You as a customer decide what you want to eat. You don't go into the kitchen and prepare the food yourself, right? Instead, you communicate your order to the waiter who then passes the order to chef in the kitchen. The chef then prepares the food and the waiter brings it back to you. So in this analogy, you as a software application which wants to use the service of another application which is kitchen, the waiter is API which communicates your request to the other application. Kitchen is an another software application like a server that processes the request and sends back the response which is food in this case. Now let us see one more real world example in IT industry. Most of us uses weather application on our smartphones to check the current weather. When we open weather app and request the current weather for our location, it uses an API to send the request to weather server for weather data. Server application receives the request with location details, processes it and sends back the current weather data for that location. The API request might look something like get slash weather and passing the location. In the end, weather app receives the data and displays it to you. The response from the weather service would include details like temperature, humidity and forecast which the application then presents to you in a readable format. This process allows the weather app to provide an up-to-date weather information without needing to store and constantly update the data itself. Instead, it relies on the API exposed by the weather service to get the information whenever needed. Now with this, I hope you are clear with what is an API and how it is getting used in the real world. The major benefit of exposing and consuming the APIs is you can have a polyglot architecture in your application. Polyglot architecture is where you can have applications developed in different technologies like one application can be developed in Java and other can be developed in .NET but still they will be able to communicate with each other and exchange information. Why do we need polyglot architecture? Because a single kind of technology may not be able to fulfill all your requirements. There can be some other technologies which are well suited for your specific requirements. So in those cases, it is always good and recommended to develop those part of your application with that technology which is optimal for that. So in that way, we'll be able to use Polyglot architecture and REST API will be able to help us when one component wants to communicate with another component. Now let us understand what is RESTful API. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. The term representational refers to the idea that resources are represented in a specific format when they are transferred between a client and server. A REST API is the one that adheres to the REST principles. Let us discuss few of those important REST principles. First principle is statelessness. In this, each request from a client to server must contain all the information needed to understand and process the request. The server does not store any state about the client session on the server side. State can be a user detail or session information. Second principle is client-server architecture. The client and server are separate entities that interact through a well-defined interface which is API. Next principle is uniform interface. The method of communication between client and server must be uniform. This typically involves using standard HTTP methods like get, post, put, etc. 
HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Under this protocol, we have different type of methods which are used for different operations. Let us discuss few most widely used HTTP methods. First method is GET method. GET method is used to retrieve a resource from a server. So whenever we want to get some data from the server via REST API, we use GET request. POST method is used to create a new resource at the server. So whenever we send some data to the server to create something new, for example, when we register on a website, we fill in all the details and when we click on register button, it sends a POST request along with the filled data to server. And using that, a new user is created on the server side. Similarly, if we want to update something in an existing data, PUT method is used. Another important method is delete. Delete method is used to remove a resource from a server. We have few more HTTP methods as well, which we do not use much frequently. So these are the most frequently used HTTP methods during our development. We all have been talking a lot about getting, updating or deleting a resource. But what exactly is a resource? A resource in this is a piece of data or a service that can be accessed over the network. It can be thought of as an object that you want to interact with via API. In the user registration example, a resource will be a user entity which got created when we submit the form. In RESTful APIs, the resources are represented in a consistent format, often using JSON or XML. Now let us try to understand our concepts of RESTful APIs using a very simple example where we will try to cover all these HTTP methods and how we can implement them. Suppose we have a bookkeeper service where we can maintain books. Now let us see how we can interact with the resources and manipulate them. To retrieve a list of books, a GET HTTP request to the URI slash books will be sent. This will return all the available books as a response. But most of the time we do not need the whole data but a specific book. To retrieve a specific book, a GET request to the URI slash books slash book ID will be sent. In this, only the book with the book ID matching with the past value will be returned. This is how we can filter out the results. Now to add a new book, a POST HTTP request to the URI slash books will be sent with all the details required which will define a book resource. The detail regarding the book can be under request parameters or request body payload. If you see, for getting all the books and posting a book, the endpoint is same which is slash books. Server side will be able to understand if it needs to save or return all the book based on the HTTP method that we are using while communicating with it. Based on that, the separate logic will be invoked. We will also implement similar in our REST API development in our next video. Now, if we want to update a specific book, for example, updating the price, version or any other information of already existing book, a PUT HTTP request can be sent to URI slash books slash book ID with the details you want to update in that book. Here also you can see this URI or the REST endpoint is same as getting a single book as well. So the server will be able to identify whether to update a book or get a specific book based on the HTTP method which we'll be passing whether it is a GET or a PUT request. Now if you want to remove a specific book, in that case a DELETE HTTP request to the URI slash books slash book ID will be sent. This will remove the resource which represents a book from the data source with that particular book ID. Now in the end let us just analyze the different components of a REST request. To retrieve a list of all the books filtered by price and country, this GET request can be used. Let's analyze its components. The first part is GET, which tells us about the type of HTTP request. Then we have a base URL, which will be common for the application endpoints. Then we have slash books, which is the actual endpoint, which will serve the request. Now after slash books, we can see two key value pairs after question mark. Those are the filter fields passed as request parameters. 
these request parameters will be received at the server end and will be used to filter the data based on their values. So in this, the books with the country India and price 250 will be returned. There is another way of sending get request with the data using path parameters as well. So in this, everything else remains same. We have added the book ID itself in the URL, but as a path parameter. That means it has become a level or path in the URL itself. This will return the book with book ID 123. For both of these get requests which we have just seen, a separate handling will be required at the server end. Now let us see just one more last example. In this we are posting a book, so that will create a book resource. Now to create a resource at server side, we need some details. That detail we can provide in the form of request parameters. But in case of big and complex objects, it becomes very difficult to maintain that long URL. So the better and safer approach is to send the resource related data as a payload in the request body. Here in this example, to create a book, we are sending all the required details to create a book resource at server side as a JSON payload in the request body, which will then be accessed at the server and used to create the required resource. So that was it regarding few basic components of API and REST API. In our next video where we will develop a RESTful API using Spring Boot, we will be using these HTTP methods to exchange the information and resource manipulation. We have few more HTTP methods but we do not use them much frequently. I hope now you have a clear understanding of what is API and RESTful API and how they works. Remember RESTful is all about following the REST principles using which we can create scalable, maintainable and efficient web services. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more tutorials like this. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any updates. If you have any questions or topics you would like me to cover in the future videos, leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video where we will develop a RESTful web service from scratch using Spring Boot. Till then, happy coding.